Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on fluids and motion. In this video, we're going to look at the question I left you guys with previously. I hope you guys had time to go through it. I hope you tried it out. If you haven't, you can pause the video and try to read through the question, understand what the question is asking you to find, and then try to work it out. We're going to use a concept that we have already dis described. So if you are still struggling on how to work out this video, I'll leave a link in the description to the video that I made on this, uh, on the idea that you're supposed to use here. So generally we're supposed to use, when you look at the question, first of all, you realize that at some point they talk about the viscosity. So implying that we are going to use an equation which has viscosity. So this is going to be the, it's going to be the, the Poiseuille's equation. So thumbs up to, to Isaac, Ntonga, and Sydney, Chisalila for working out this question. I, they left their comments in the description, in the chat section, in the comment section that is, and their, their, their answers are correct. So let's see how they arrived at those answers. I don't know if their methods were, were similar to the approach I'm going to take, but I'm going to assume that, that they are. So let's look at how I approach this, uh, this question. And then after that, let me know what you think. Let me know how you worked out this question. And if you did reach at the same answer as I did, or as Isaac and Sydney did, what method did you use? If not, if not the one I'm going to present, I'd like to hear from, from you guys in the comment section. But enough about that. Let's see what we're supposed to do. So the first step is to know what they want us to find here. They want us to find the radius of the needle that should be used to inject a certain volume of a solution into a patient. Now, of course, after you know what you're trying to find, the next thing that you want to do is to obtain what you're actually given. So if we look at our solutions, how are we working out this question? So in this case, we obtain what you're given, we're being told the radius, this is what we're trying to find. And then apart from the radius, we're told that what to inject a volume of. So for Volume will always use capital V, and then for velocity, we're going to use small letter V. But throughout, I think for this question, we're only dealing with the, uh, we're only going to deal with the, uh, yeah, with volume. So V here is going to represent volume at every point. So we've been told that the volume we want to inject into a patient is 500 cubic centimeters. So you want to write away convert this to meters because all the other quantities that you're going to deal with here, the viscosity, the length, the pressure, they are all going to have um, a meter somewhere. So you don't really want to have like, this cubic centimeter. So if you convert this, you should be able to arrive at 500 by 10 to the power negative six. So notice that I just divided this by, I'm just dividing this by a million to reach at its unit in meter cubic. So again, if you guys are struggling with how to convert units, you can just leave a comment in the comment section. I should be able to make a video on, 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 on the steps you're supposed to use. So the next thing, we're being told that we want to eject this volume in a time t that is equal to 30 minutes. So we want to eject 500 cubic centimeters of the solution in 30 minutes. So we want this to be in, in seconds. So we know every minute has 60 seconds. So we just want to multiply those 30 minutes by 60 so that we get the time in, in seconds. So next up, we know from these two we can easily get the the flow rate, but we'll, we'll see exactly why we need that in a, in a minute. So next up, we're being told that the length of the, of the needle is going to be 2.5 centimeters. So of course, this in meters is 0 0.025 meters. And then we have the height. This solution is elevated such that it is at a height of one meter and the height, or that's the height. And then we're being told that the viscosity and the density, we're supposed to take that of pure water. So we're going to use viscosity of water at 20 degrees Celsius. So we're going to use one by 10 to the power negative three, the parts per second. And then the density of water, we're going to use a thousand kgs per meter cubic, okay? Now, the next thing here, if you, you have followed the rate of the question and you know what, you're, what, what we're trying to find, and the, the fact that we have viscosity here, we're going to use the Poiseuille's equation. So the equation we're going to use is this one, pi r to the four, 
P1 minus P2 divided by eight, the viscosity and the length. Okay. Now the, the tricky part here is to know what P1 is. Knowing what P2 is is a little bit easy since the question just, all you have to do is understand where the fluid is flowing from and where it is going to. So P1 is where the fluid is coming from. And then P2 is where the fluid is going. So if you look at this, the question says, if you go back to the question, it says that the fluid is flowing from the, the, the needle and it is going into the vein. The question says the pressure inside the vein is atmospheric. So if I use P0, P with a subscript zero there, to mean the atmospheric pressure, then you can see that P2 is easy. We know it's at atmospheric pressure. You guys know to say atmospheric pressure is just one ATM. You can easily convert one ATM to Pascals. And then we'll see if we need that for now. But all we're saying is P2 is just the atmospheric pressure, P0. But the problem is, or the trick here is what P1 is. Okay, we're going to see exactly how we come up with what P1 is, because we need P1, we need P2 here to be able to work out this question. So we want, us, we want to find the radius of the, of the needle. So that is where the radius is. So we just want to make that radius subject of the formula. So we're going to cross multiply here. And if we do that, we have Q multiplying eight, multiplying the viscosity, multiplying the length, this is what is equal to pi r to the four, p1 minus p2. Next up, we divide both sides by pi p1 minus p2, and then we end up with q8 by the viscosity, the length, divided by pi p1 minus p2. This is what is what gives us r to the four. So in other words, r to the power four is equal to the flow rate Q multiplying eight by that, the viscosity, the length of the needle divided by pi P1 minus P2. So a reminder again, Q here is the flow rate. Now you guys should be able to remember that in the Poisson's equation, the flow rate that is being used here, the Q is the volume flow rate. And you remember that volume flow rate is equal to the volume divided by the time. So from here, you can write a way, work out what the volume flow rate Q is, because you saw the volume given there that you want to eject is 500 cubic centimeters, or you can convert that to, to meter cubic, which becomes this, as you saw earlier on, then want to divide this by the time. So the duration that we want, to, that we want this to happen in is 30 minutes. So this is 30 by, 60 seconds. This is meter cubic. So from here, you should be able to see that the volume flow rate Q that you get is 2.777 and so on. So just going to get 2.78 by 10 to the power negative seven. So the units here, of course, are the meter cubic per second. Okay. So you have your Q. The question already gives you what the viscosity is. We're taking it to be one by 10 to the negative three. The length of the needle is given in the question. Pi, we know it's a constant. So the, the only thing that we're remaining with here really is what P1 is because P2 is the atmospheric pressure. But what is P1? Well, this is where the trick starts. Now, the fluid is elevated. So let's take this to be the container. Let's say the section where the fluid is. The diagram is not pretty really. All that I want you guys to see is exactly how you obtain the, how you obtain the, the expression for P1. You can put the ejection rate, the, the, the needle in any, any, any order really. But I'm going to place it like this. Now, the only thing that I want here is it are saying the fluid is elevated. So meaning from the top part where the fluid is to where the needle is connected, the height, elevation here, this is one meter. Now, from here, you guys should be able to see that we can easily calculate the pressure at the bottom here, because this is the one that is going to be the starting point, the starting pressure from where the needle is, because what we have is P1, where the fluid is coming from, 
and P2, where the fluid is going. So if this is our needle of that given length, P2 is this side in the vein. Okay, now how do we obtain P1? Now, a common mistake that uh, most students would do is they would observe quite right that this is a fluid, and to get the pressure of a fluid at a given depth, you can easily say P1 is equal to the density of the fluid, G multiplying H. This is the formula that we saw previously on how to calculate the pressure of the fluid at a given depth. So if you haven't seen that video, again, I'll leave the link to that video also in the description. But the problem here is if you evaluated what this quantity will be, you should be able to see that taking the density to be 1000, G to be 9.8, the height to be one meter, this comes to give you 9,800 pascals as the density. Now, if you take what P2 is, P2 is the atmospheric pressure, which comes as approximately 101 with three zeros, because it's 1.01 .01 by 10 to the power five pascals. So you'd observe that here, P2 would be greater than P1. What this would result into is, the fluid will start to flow from the vein going this side, out of the vein, out of the vein. In other words, the content of the vein will start flowing out. Why is it so? Because fluids, you guys have to keep, in, keep this in mind, fluids will flow from high pressure to low pressure. So fluids always flow from high pressure to low pressure. So if we were to take the pressure at one to be rho GH, it would mean that the pressure at one would be less than the pressure at two, implying that the fluid would have to flow from the vein out of the system. But we can't have that. We want to inject this fluid into the bloodstream. So P1 has to be greater than P2. This can only be possible if this was an open system and meaning that it is exposed to the external pressure P0 and P1 has to be the absolute pressure at that particular point. What that would mean is this is no longer just the expression for, for P1. To obtain P1, we have to add that external pressure and we know the external pressure is just the atmospheric pressure P0, meaning that now, when ob obtaining the value for P1, you have the pressure due to the fluid itself plus the external pressure P0. This makes sense. The value you'd end up with for P1 will be obviously greater than the value for P2, meaning now correctly we have a situation where the pressure at P1 is greater than the pressure at P2. The fluid ends up flowing from P1 to P2, which makes sense now. So I hope you guys we're able to follow through that, um, that train of thought. Now, with that in mind, you guys should be able to see that P1 minus P2 will just be equal to P1, we just saw to say P1 is rho GH plus P0, all this is P1 plus P2. And remember P2, we said it is atmospheric, meaning it is P0 as well. This is P2. This, this we're not adding here, we're subtracting. What this implies is we have rho GH plus P naught minus P naught. So this then simplifies to just become rho GH. And as you saw earlier on, we just evaluated what rho GH is. And this gave us 9,800 pascals. Okay, so this is what P1 minus P2 gives us. Now, once we've obtained this, we go back to our formula C. Now we have everything that we need. Our expression was R to the power four is equal to Q multiplying eight by the viscosity by the length of the needle divided by pi times P1 minus P2. Now we know what P1 minus P2 is. We saw what the volume flow rate was 
And then we also saw um, the question gave us already the viscosity, it's that of water, and the length of the needle is given to us. So from here, we can substitute the, the volume flow rate, that's two, not right there, 2.78 by 10 to the power negative seven by eight, by one, by 10 to the power negative three, by 0 0.025. So this is this is all divided by pi multiplying P1 minus P2, we're just from obtaining that value. So from here now it's simplification, multiply the numerator and then divide it by pi times 9,800. We should be able to get the numerator of this whole thing should be able to simplify to give you 1.80592139 to 1395 by 10 to the power negative 15. So from here, remember this is R to the four. So you want to raise, R is going to be equivalent to 1.805921395 by 10 to the power negative 15. But this has to be raised to the power one over four. So from here, the value of R comes out as 2.06 by 10 to the power four meters. Okay. All right, so I hope you guys were able to get this. Uh, it's very important for you guys to know exactly how um, the pressure at P1 is obtained. And again, when you're working out in a test, knowing where the fluid is going will help you easily spot an, a mistake when you've made one, because you know P1 is where the fluid is coming from, meaning P1 has to be at higher pressure than P2. It's a thing which is very important when you're, when you're coming up with these methods, whether it's going to be in a hospital or maybe you're, as an engineer, you have to know that P1 must be at higher pressure if the fluid has to flow from P1 to P2. Otherwise, if you swap them, if you end up with a situation where P1 is less than P2, what will happen is the opposite. The fluid will end up flowing from P2 going towards P1. And in most cases, you don't want that. Okay, so above all, you just, you just want to control what is happening. See, if the fluid has to flow backwards, it has to be because you want it to flow in that direction. Okay, so again, thumbs up to Isaac for for finding this answer. I don't know what method you use. Did you use the same approach? Is this what, uh, what you did as well? Let me know as well in the comment section. Thumbs up for that. And also thumbs up to Sydney who also arrived at the same answer. Okay, so um, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, leave a like. Uh, let me hear what you what else you want to see. You can, you can leave your reactions in the, in the chat section. Otherwise, for our next tutorial, we are going to look at another interesting question. It's not very hard, something simple. You guys should be able to pull it off. So this question, unlike the previous one, if you try to read through, this question doesn't have anything to do with viscosity. They don't mention anything about viscosity here. So we're going to assume that the viscosity, the, the fluid here that has no viscosity. So we're going to use um, a, a simpler approach. So I hope you guys will be able to come up with that method. You guys can try it out before our next, uh, next tutorial. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next session. This was your tutor.